Hey guys, I'm Dominic from Rocket Jump Film School. Uh, we're here at Illuminar today to show you guys what the process is of renting gear from a rental house. So let's go figure it out. Hey guys, my name is Daniel. I work here at Illuminar in Glendale, California, and we do lighting and grip rentals for all kinds of budgets. All right, Daniel, so what kind of paperwork do we need to fill out to be able to rent the gear from you guys today? We have a insurance requirement policy, okay. a basic rental agreement, and okay. a credit card authorization form. Awesome, so let me just clarify. Credit card authorization allows you guys to access my credit card if I'm paying by credit card. Correct. Okay, the rental agreement is just an agreement between us, the lender and the leasee, saying that I'm renting gear from you. Yes. And then the insurance certification is something that I have to probably get on my own or through the company I'm working with. That is correct. And most of the time, if you're a film student, you can get your insurance through the school so you can rent gear. So now that we got all the paperwork taken care of, we can go ahead and start prepping the package. Now me and Daniel are gonna go through and cross-reference the gear that's actually loaded here with the list that I gave him earlier and make sure everything's here and in working order. The main reason doing your checks and counts before you go out on a job is to make sure everything's there because you wanna make sure you have all of your gear there already. If you go out on the shoot without checking and come back and something is missing or broken, you're held accountable for any gear that isn't there even if it wasn't there from the start because if you didn't count it to say that it wasn't there, it's your word against the rental company. Counts are super important from a grip and electric standpoint. You always wanna make sure you don't have any L&D, which is losses and damages. I'm just double check, I got a six by solid, six by ultra bounce, six by single, six by double, yep, six by yep. half grid. Correct. That's everything, That's all right, right cool. One, Those are all two, good, two and two and two. two. Got our distro box, we've got our lunch boxes, four baby nail on plates. That's it. All right. Okay. Always do your counts, before, during, and before you bring it back. Before, during, and after, always counting. Always be counting, A, B, C. I just made that up. Okay guys, we finished prepping our package and now we're gonna show you how to properly and safely load a grip electric truck. All right guys, here we have the attic. What we do up here is kind of throw stuff that doesn't fit nicely anywhere else on the truck or the carts um, because the number one thing about a truck is you wanna have it nice and tidy, clean, easy to access. The next thing we're gonna do, now that we have our attic loaded with all of our loose gear, uh, we're gonna load stuff up into the top of the truck. Normally ladders, frames, speed rail, those are the type of things that go up there. Long, skinny things, you know, that so they're just not on the floor so you're not tripping over them. It's very important when you're loading stuff overhead, so you always wanna tie it down, either with you know safety chains or sash or whatever, so when you're moving the truck, when it's driving all around, they don't slide off or fall off or damage any other goods in the truck. Nice little square knot, easy to pull out. Ties it down. Okay, now that we have our attic loaded up and our overhead stuff tied down and safe, uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab our carts and start loading up the truck. This is our head cart. Um, we call it that because you know all the lights are known as heads. We're gonna load this into the truck, back left side, so we have our openings facing us, so it's, we're able to work off the truck and pull stuff off of it easily. All right. When you're loading carts in, you want to have your smart wheels facing the end of the truck. On a cart, there's two sets of wheels. The back wheels are locked into place, so they don't spin at all. So the wheels that spin are what we call our smart wheels. They help you maneuver and guide a lot easier. If you put the smart wheels at the back, it's a lot harder to pull the cart off the truck because you don't have, you can't wiggle it left and right and try to maneuver it out because the carts get heavy. So you'll see the wheels turn as I come in. Always get the carts up against the wall so they're touching. That way when you put the ratchets against there, it's kind of pressing it up against the wall and won't go anywhere. And then on all carts, here we go, we have our brake right here. Right now it's off. Step on it and slide it over to the right. Brake is on and our cart is ready to be ratcheted. So here are our ratchet straps. There's through the wood. If you do it, you want to loop it around the wood and hook it right there. So it's hooked on the wood and still has reinforcement in case anything pops out. One of the best versions is using what we call a D-ring. It's movable, fits into these. It's locked into place right now. Hook this to the D-ring. So now we're just gonna re-ratchet it in. Pull tight, loosen the ratchet. 
ratchet. Um, this ratchet's a little low. I'm gonna add a second ratchet just for extra safety, make sure the cart isn't super top heavy and pop a little bit. All right, ratcheted, let's go get our taco cart. We got our taco cart now, it's probably our, one of our other heaviest carts. Another smart thing about loading a truck is you always wanna think about weight distribution. Um, so I'm gonna put this taco cart on the opposite side. We got our smart wheels facing out. Our cart snugged up against the wall. Breaks on, and now it's ready to be ratcheted. Ratcheted. Here's our four by cart. It's got all of our floppies and frames and diffusion and everything. Smart wheels in. Cart against the wall. Break on. So it's packed this way, because imagine if you had your 4 by cart in the back, you'd have to pull the cart completely out and off the truck in order to access your 4 by and your 4 by uh, frames. If the head cart, the shelves were facing up against the wall, it's good, it keeps the lights safe, but you'd have to pull the cart out and re or rearrange the truck to be able to pull off all your heads and stuff. Um, same with the taco cart. This is a muscle cart, we have cable in it. Normally you load them right up, so if you know you properly loaded a truck, if you have just enough space between the carts in the aisle to stick your muscle carts. They should fit perfectly, just snug. Here we go. Like a glove. Um, normally you have carts pretty much coming all the way to the end of the truck. We don't on our truck, it's a pretty small package, but the muscle carts should fit snugly right up the center. All right, great, perfect, look at that. These are shiny board cases. Some rental houses have them loaded up onto carts. You'll see these at the end of trucks a lot because they are extremely heavy and they'd be a pain to take on and off the truck. So you leave it at the end here, so you can just open it up. And similar to the four by cart, just be able to slide it right off the truck like that. So it's just another cart, it's a distro cart. Um, usually for bigger shows when you have a lot more distro, uh, you'll load this cart with stingers and lunch boxes, gang boxes, all kinds of stuff like that. So we have our head cart, our taco cart with the C stands, four by cart, our empty distro cart, a couple muscle carts right up the center, and our shiny board case here. Ladders and frames up top, and uh, any kind of loose stuff in the attic. And that's, uh, that's essentially how you properly load up a grip truck so it looks nice and neat and is pretty workable off the truck. The most important thing about operating and using the lift gate is always be vocal. You want to always announce everything that you're doing to let everybody around you know. So, the gate's up here, you're going, gate down, gate down, no gate. Either of those work fine. Keep, and you know, so that alerts everybody that there's no gate. That if they step off the truck, there's gonna be nothing there. Once you get to the bottom of the lift gate, it kind of stops because of the gears down there. You press both buttons instead of just the down button. You go tilting. And you yell tilting to alert the other people who might happen to be on the lift gate that you're going to be tilting down so they don't lose their balance, they get scared and a cart comes toppling down onto them. Always be announcing, always be saying everything. So that's basically how you load up a grip truck. Uh, I hope you guys feel a lot more familiar and comfortable with it now. If you take anything away from it, number one thing about grip trucks and grip and electric in general is safety. Always be safe. Make sure your cart's up against the wall, ratchet it in with the brakes on and don't jump off the lift gate. Always shout it out, use your etiquette. Thanks again for watching. Uh, if you have any more questions or comments or concerns, please feel free to ask us in the forum. We'll be around. Have a great day, guys. I'll catch you later. See ya.